Things are going well for General Robert E. Lee and his Confederate Army of Northern Virginia. Lee has had victories over the Union Army of the Potomac for several months now. His opponent now is George Brinton McClellan. Lee had faced him before in the Peninsula Campaign months earlier, and McClellan is overly cautious. When Britain talks of recognizing the Confederacy and entering the war, Lee invades north into Maryland. But as Lee invades, McClellan accidentally finds one of Lee's orders telling where his general should be. This includes his one half at Harper's Ferry to march up to meet with him. It is then that Lee is cornered into the small little western Maryland town of Sharpsburg, and one of the bloodiest days in American history has begun. At 5 o'clock on September 17th, the battle began when McClellan sent Federals under the command of Joseph Hooker to Lee's left flank. Their goal is to reach the Dunkard Church, which is a strong position of rebel artillery and infantry. The area that this takes place in is all around a cornfield owned by a Mr. Miller. Confederate forces are right in front of it. Suddenly, the Confederates fire into the Union line, and the battle has begun. Vicious fighting takes place for a little while, until the Union Black Hat Brigade pushes the Confederates out of the cornfield. It is then that counterattack upon counterattack takes place in the middle of cornfield, West Woods, and Dunker Church area. The last of the charging lines had gone beyond, and was sweeping majestically into the jaws of death. When the mass seemed to halt, while well, from the front line spouted forth a long angry sheet of fire from innumerable gun barrels, men were falling fast now, as unseen batteries were pelting the lines with an iron storm, and the Confederate bullets were finding the object of their flight. It finally seems that the Union has won when Union General Joseph Manfield has occupied the Dunker Church. To prevent them from being counterattacked, Federals under Edwin Sumner's command move upward. It is then that a brutal counterattack by the Confederate occurs from both sides on Sedgwick's troops, forcing them from the field. It is then that Mansfield's troops are attacked on the flank at the Dunker Church and retreat panic stricken. The attack on the Rebel left has failed miserably. As the attack on the left occurs, troops from Sumner's Corps are marching into the fray. However, some of them are misguided and actually end up hitting the Confederate middle. The Confederates there were an outstanding cover, 
as the old deep farm lane known as the Sunken Road offers perfect cover that is equivalent of a trench. The signal of the approaching storm was the bursting of French's division through the field of corn, hardly ruffled by the affair at the roulette house, spreading its grand march against our center. They came in full appreciation of the work at in hand. March better than on drill, unfolded banners making gay their gallant step. The result is waves of Federals annihilated. Casualties in the sunken road begin to mount. No reinforcements can come since Lee has had them in the earlier fighting. When a Confederate line is bending back, a rebel officer tries to get extra troops there. Instead, he accidentally orders the troops to fall back. A hole is left in the Confederate line. Union troops then take advantage of this and fill the hole. The Confederate center has fallen. Meanwhile, as the sunken road is being fought, Federals under the command of Ambrose Burnside mount an attack on the Confederate right. This is along Antietam Creek. A bridge runs across it, and the shore on the other side is steep hills. This makes a perfect firing range for the Confederates there. The Federals try to cross the bridge in three waves, the two failing. Then, on the third assault, Federal infantry takes cover behind the fence and wall beside the bridge. As Confederate casualties mount, the Federals cross the bridge and overrun them. Now, two-thirds of Lee's lines have collapsed. Now that most of Lee's army has collapsed, Lee's army is on the verge of total annihilation and the end of the Civil War. Things got so desperate that General D.H. Hill took up a rifle and led 200 troops to attempt to take back the sunken road. The assault fails. Also, Confederate General James Longstreet even had his own staff fire a cannon onto Federal troops. These and other attempts to stall the Federals succeed in making McClellan overcautious and keeping him from putting in extra 20,000 troops he has into the battle. It is a decision that will make the Civil War go on for three bloody more years. Just when it looks like the Confederate Army shall disintegrate, Confederates from Harper's Ferry arrive and push back the Federals that are advancing. army has been spared a terrible fate. Casualties are enormous, as 22,720 men lay dead, wounded, or captured. It is the most casualties taken in any battle in American history. That is more casualties than the Revolutionary War, War of 1812, and Mexican-American War combined. Tactically, the engagement is a draw, but the Union has had a strategic victory as Britain will now not enter the war. 
and Lee withdraws from Maryland. With this victory, Lincoln also uses the opportunity to issue the Emancipation Proclamation, which frees all slaves from southern territories as of January 1st, 1863.